Experiment S3, Properties of Waves, is basically uh, just a good excuse for you to learn how to use the oscilloscope. We're going to measure some wave properties and in the process you'll learn how to use the basic digital oscilloscope. So, the first thing we do is connect the output of the generator to the oscilloscope. Now, the output of the generator is alternating current, just like a power cord outlet. And you have to remember that the black one is always held at zero potential. So if you plug into that, you will not get any signal. The red one alternates between positive and negative potential relative to the black one. So the signal always comes from the red one. And the black one is simply a ground to complete the circuit. Okay, now this is going into channel one of the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is basically a voltmeter. And it, instead of moving a needle or giving a digital readout like uh, an ordinary voltmeter, what it does is it essentially plots a graph of voltage on the y-axis versus time on the x-axis. So let me turn on my power supply here. I've got it uh, set to put out about 750 hertz. And I can see the sine wave here on the scale. Now if I adjust the output, I can make that sine wave larger or smaller in amplitude. If I change the frequency, I can make the wavelength of the signal larger or smaller. Now, these two sets of controls that are marked vertical control the y-axis of our graph here. These, uh, there are actually two separate input channels. Right now we're just looking at channel one. This knob, the one that's marked volts per division, sets the scale of the y-axis. So I can make the signal larger or smaller. If I make it too big, it's kind of hard to see. I, all I'm seeing is vertical lines. So in a case like that, just simply turn it back down until you can see the signal. This one over here, this set of controls marked horizontal, controls the x-axis, which is time. And so when I change the seconds per division, it lets me see more cycles or fewer cycles. Now, all of these have position knobs. In the horizontal case, it'll move the signal left and right. In the vertical case, it'll move the signal up or down. There's a number and an arrow, in this case number one, and that tells us where the zero point of the signal is. So a lot of times we'll want that set right on the x-axis so that the signal is centered on the screen. Now, <clears throat> there are a number of menus on here and in order to learn how each one of them works you need to go through every step in the procedure here and it'll show you what they all do. For example, one of the most useful ones of all is the cursor menu. And if you push the cursor menu, you have uh, two options. One is voltage and one is time. For example, if I set it on voltage, I get two horizontal cursors controlled by the position menu, uh, the position knobs. So if I move this one up, say, to the very top of the wave, 
and the other one down to the very bottom of the wave, I get what's called the peak to peak amplitude. And if you look right here on the screen, there's a window marked delta, and that says the difference between those two cursors is 11 volts. If I change to time, it makes the cursors vertical. And let's say I put one of them, uh, let me move my signal just a little bit. I'll put one of the cursors on this peak right here and the other cursor on this peak over here. And the difference is 1.78 milliseconds. And the reciprocal of that, that's what this number below it is. It's simply the reciprocal of the time between the cursors. It says about 562 hertz, uh, which is uh, my output over here says 560. So <clears throat> they're reasonably, it's a reasonably accurate way to measure the period and then calculate the frequency of a signal. Another part of this experiment involves looking at phase shifts and for that we'll need to see two waves on the screen and so what we'll do is we'll make a little circuit here and we'll come from the output of the function generator and we'll go to this capacitor and then we'll go from this capacitor to this resistor and then we'll complete the circuit by going from the resistor back to the ground of the circuit and then we'll have channel two of the oscilloscope look at the voltage across this resistor. Now let me turn on channel two and uh, it's amplified a little too high so let me bring it down. Okay, and I'll adjust it so that channel two is also aligned exactly with the x-axis and now you can see that these two signals do not go through their phases at the same time. This one here is going through its phases later in time. This is late in time, this is early in time. So we would say that this signal here, and which one is that? That's, this is channel two here. Channel two is leading and channel one, this one, is lagging. And we can determine that phase shift by again pressing the cursor uh, menu. We want time. I'll set one of the cursors, let's say right here at this descending node, and the other cursor right here at this descending node. The difference between them is about 270 microseconds. So this phase time, if you want to express the phase shift in degrees, you simply say that the ratio of this phase time to the period of the signal is the same as the ratio of this phase angle to 360 degrees. And the experiment asks you to measure the phase shift at a number of different frequencies. Turns out that this phase shift is dependent on frequency. If, for example, I raise the frequency of the signal, that phase shift becomes not only smaller in time units, but it also becomes a smaller fraction of the 360 degrees of the period. So <clears throat> your TA will show you a number of tricks. When the frequency gets higher and higher, this phase shift gets very small, and there are a number of tricks for magnifying it and 
cleaning up the signal. We do have a little problem in this laboratory. There's a radio station right over there pumping out about 90 megahertz RF signal and it does cause a lot of noise in these signals here. Shielded cables help a lot but they don't completely eliminate it. So go through all of this, read it very carefully and do each step so you learn what all of the functions are on the oscilloscope.